Good evening. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good morning to you. I knew as soon as it was out of my mouth, somebody would catch me. Scripture says that be sure your sins will find you out, and there's Phyllis, she caught me out. Welcome to all of you. We're glad that you're here this afternoon. This is a celebration, and it's hard for us to think about it being a celebration. But without this event, we would have no reason to rejoice, because our Savior paid for our sins with His blood. We're so glad that you're here, whether you're here in person or you're online, we thank you. Glad that you took the time to be here with us. Join me, if you will, in a moment of prayer, and we'll continue. Father, Lord God, when we realize what our sin has cost you, our very hearts are ripped out of our chest. We grieve, Lord, that you paid for our sins, for our brokenness. We grieve because without you, we are truly lost. But because of your sacrifice, we can rejoice. We can have peace. Thank you, Lord, for loving us so much in that while we were yet sinners, you gave your life for us. We know that this is a tough time, that we grieve. Many here grieve. Many here have understood the loss caused by death, but few have realized the torture that you went through, that we might be set free. So we give you thanks and praise, for you are God, and there is no other. You came to the cross willingly, and today we celebrate your obedience we celebrate because you are God, and we celebrate because in this sacrifice, our sins are forgiven. So thank you and praise you for that in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. If you brought your Bible with us today, turn with me to Mark chapter 14. We're going to begin in verse 17. When evening came, Jesus arrived at the, with the twelve. While they were reclining at table eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. One who is eating with me. They were saddened. And one by one they said to him, surely not I. It is one of the twelve, he replies, one who dips his bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and offered it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. I tell you the truth. I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. We're going to follow the path of Christ today. We're going to consider his sacrifice. We're going to have the Lord's Supper. And at the end of our service today, after we sing a hymn, we will go out. We will leave this place, even as the disciples left the upper room. And I am asking you to refrain from visiting chatting, talking, laughing, until you're out of the body of Christ, out of the sanctuary, and into the area of we call a parking lot. We don't have a garden to go to, but we want to honor that, that circumstance where they sang a hymn and left. So at the very end, we'll be singing, and then we will leave quietly. Amen? Amen. 
As we approach the, uh, the crucifixion today, Jesus, known as the Christ, we see that the disciples were celebrating the Passover. Indeed, it was a celebration because they knew that they had been ransomed from the slavery of Egypt, and it was a remembrance. And they left that time with a bit of sadness because they knew that he was going to sacrifice themselves. Now, they didn't want to believe it. And then he called out and said, there's someone here who's going to betray me. We don't like to think about that betrayal. We don't like to think about the fact that someone who had walked with Jesus and eaten with Jesus, had experienced the things that Jesus had done, we don't want to think about the fact that one of the closest of his companions would betray him. And yet the scripture tells us that there was one who was going to betray him. And you can just hear them, surely not I, surely not I. You can hear the doubt in their voices. How would I betray you? Now, he was talking of Judas, but I ask you to consider in your own life. As you walk with Jesus, as you talk with Jesus in prayer, as you spend time with him, as you worship him, think of the events in your own life whereby behavior or unthought spoken word that you too and I have betrayed Christ by our behavior. And the world that is lost, the world that is without him, looks at us, and rather than seeing a path to redemption, they see hypocrisy. I look in the mirror every day, as you do, when I get, get up in the morning and get my shower and prepare for the day, I look in the mirror, and I ask myself, Will you betray the Lord today by your actions, by your thoughts, by a misspoken word? And we know that Judas left. He went to betray his Lord. He made an arrangement with those who were going to torture and kill him. And the saddest part of it is, is he did it with a kiss. A sign of love. Even today in that part of the world, people greet each other with a kiss. In our own country, in our own culture, we greet one another with a kiss. Not so much men with men, or we're too uh, uptight for that. I think of a deacon I had in a church where I pastored, a man named Randy. And every time I met him, he gave me a hug and a kiss on the cheek. a sign of friendship and love in Christ. In fact, the Scripture tells us to greet one another with a holy kiss. So when Judas betrayed Jesus, he did it with a kiss. What a horrible thing. You see, Satan takes what is good and he perverts it. He, he makes it bad. He makes it ugly. You know, Jesus wasn't betrayed as much as he gave himself for us. It was a willing act. In fact, he said, no one takes my life. I give it freely. I give it freely. No matter what somebody says, he gave it freely. He gave his life for me. He gave it for you. He wraps his arms around you and pulls you close. And he says, you are forgiven. You're forgiven. There's nothing that you can do in your life that's going to separate you from that kind of love. The only thing that separates you from that kind of love is a willingness to walk away from it. You see, He loves you so much that He, he wants to have that relationship with you, but He will not force Himself on you. And so Jesus gave Himself. We have to understand that the severest punishment is reserved 
for those who betray him. Hebrews 10, 9, how much more severely do you think a man deserves to be punished? Who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified him, and who has insulted the Spirit of grace. We must be careful. So as we continue looking we see that as Jesus was speaking again in Mark 14, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. Jesus had gone through the garden. He had sweat drops of blood. He had prayed. He had asked for deliverance from his commitment. I ask myself, how many times do I pray, Lord, release me from this commitment? I've talked to pastors Many, many times we are having a difficult time. I thank God every day for this body, for this church. They're sweet people. They're good people. They love me, and I love them. But here's the thing. There are pastors who are serving in churches that, quite frankly, are mean. And I know because I've talked to those men, and they say, I would leave in a heartbeat. Why don't you? I ask. And the response is always because God has not released me. I have a commitment to God, and I can just see here that we have a commitment to God. Just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law and the elders. And now the betrayer had arranged the signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. And going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. And the men seized Jesus and arrested him. With that kiss of death, Judas handed Jesus over to be tortured and killed. At the same time, the steps toward our redemption were set in motion. You know, I, I look with mixed emotion as Isaiah. He says, he, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. You know, I've had surgery quite a bit in the last year. And many of you have undergone surgery too. And by those wounds that you experienced, you were healed. It's ironic that we are healed because of another's wounds. We are healed because Jesus was willing to experience the wounding of his heart, of his spirit, of his body. The one who was sinless gave himself for you and me. So as we think about this time, as we take the Lord's Supper, as we trace again the trail that led to Golgotha and a grave, I want you to remember that he was pierced for your transgression. I want you to remember that he was crushed under the weight of your sin in my sin. I want you to think about the fact that his very wounds healed you and me. So as we prepare for this time, I'm going to ask you to bow your head and take a moment of quiet, real introspection and ask the Spirit of God to look into your heart and ask him if there's anything that you need to lay before him. Anything of unforgiveness toward a brother or sister or family member, anything of a hidden sin, anything that would betray the Christ. Can you do that today? Bow your heads, please. Father, thank you for the sacrifice that you have given in the person of your Son, the one who bought our peace 
who healed us and has restored us, that we may see you one day face to face in Christ's name. Amen. Can we have our servants come forward, please, to serve? You'll find today that there are two cups, one inside the other, so you can feel confident that uh, you're not going to get uh, any anything except the bread and the juice. Paul writes, For I have received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we thank you for the broken body of Christ by which we are healed. In Christ's name, amen. I want you to think as you have taken the bread and chewed it, the significance of crushing it, and think about your own sin that crushed him. But also think about the cup. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. It is by this blood that you are washed clean. Thank you, Father, for the blood of Christ that showers us with grace and mercy and forgiveness that we will one day see you face to face. In Christ's name, amen.
Let's join together in hymn 365 in remembrance. In remembrance of me, eat this bread. In remembrance of me, drink this wine. In remembrance of me, pray for the time when God's own will is done in remembrance of me heal the sick in remembrance of me feed the poor in remembrance of me open the door and let your brother in let him in take eat and be comforted drink and remember to that this is my body and precious blood shed for you shed for you in remembrance of me search for truth in remembrance of me always love in remembrance of me don't look above but in your heart look in your heart for God Do this in remembrance of me. In Mark 14, we find they went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little further, he fell to the ground and prayed that, if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not that I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Could you not watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Once more he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough! The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer.
Señor. Hush their singing and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever I'd stay in the garden with him Though the night around me be falling But he bids me go Through the voice of woe His voice to me is calling and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever Luke 22, 47 through 53. While he was still speaking, a crowd came up, and the man who was called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading him. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus asked him, Judas, are you betraying the son of man with a kiss? And when the followers saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, shall we strike him with our swords? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest cutting off his ear. But Jesus answered, No more of this. And he touched the man's ear and it was healed. Then Jesus said to the priests, the officers of the temple guard, and the elders who had come for him, Am I leading a rebellion? Have you come with swords and clubs? Every day I was with you in the temple courts, and you did not lay a hand on me. But this is your hour. And darkness reigns. Mm -hmm. 
Would you stand for this one? John 1, 29 through 30. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. In Mark 15, 12 through 20. What shall I do then with the one you call King of the Jews? Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace, that is, the praetorium. He called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him. They twisted a crown of thorns together and set it on him. And they began to call out, Hail, King of the Jews. Again they struck, struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him. Falling to their knees, they paid homage, homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe put on his own clothes back on him, then led him away to be crucified. Can you stand with me there? Marvelous grace of our loving Lord Grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt Yonder on Calvary's mount outpoured There where the blood of the Lamb was spilled Grace, grace, God's grace 
Grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace. Grace that is greater than all our sin. Dark is the stain that we cannot hide. What can avail to wash it away? Look, there is flowing a crimson tide. Whiter than snow you may be today. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, Grace that is greater than all our sin. Marvelous, infinite, matchless grace freely bestowed on all who believe, all who are longing to see his face will you this moment his grace receive grace grace God's grace grace that will pardon and cleanse within grace grace god's grace grace that is greater than all our sin amen thank you you may be seated you've had that feeling when you realize something, but it's too late. When all you want to do is just step back in time, but all you get is just to turn around and stare at it. And you wish for a different outcome. You wish for a second chance. But you don't get it. I've got a pocket full of those kind of feelings. I was there that day at the foot of the cross. A shell of a man, a heart hardened to emotion, to death, to gore. I was the one that nailed him to it like I had done hundreds of times to countless thieves and robbers and rebels that had gone before him. But that man, he did things. He said things. Life just didn't seep out of him. He seemed to decide when to let go. You ever been in a conversation with someone that says that they, uh, that they forgive you and you kind of bow up because you don't think you need forgiven, but deep down you know there isn't something just quite right? And you do one or two things. You, you either keep thinking about it and it just makes you angry or... That man uh, 
Jesus. That day on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And then he looked at me. He, uh, he looked at me. And then it, and then it just, it just hit me like, like a, like a, like a, like, like a, like a, like a, like a, like a biting wind. break their bones, I nail their hands and their feet, I stab them in the side. Why do you need forgiven when you're just doing your job and you're just doing it right? I'm the one that needs to be forgiven. I looked up at him and I knew he was and is the Son of God. Mark 15, 25 to 37. <clears throat> it was the third hour when they crucified him. The written notice on the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. They crucified two robbers with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their head and saying, so you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Christ, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe those crucified with him also healed insults on him. At the sixth hour, darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama santa totina which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing nearby heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elijah. One man ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a stick, and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. Amen. Far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross with the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. Rugged cross, so despised by the world, has a wondrous attraction for me. With a dear lamb of God, 
left his glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. So cherish the old rugged cross to my true. Tell us, I. It is finished. Go in peace.